So this is pretty exciting. A um, friend of mine uh, told me about the Fortech that's coming out. This is the 3.0. Uh, it's an all-wheel drive chassis and it's pretty neat. Uh, I do own the uh, 2.0 and I think it is, it's great. I mean, it's great for a spec class for uh, a touring car that you can just run out on the road or run at the track with other Fortechs and just have fun. Uh, it's durable uh, and just like all tracks, parts availability is generally great. Uh, and the 3.0 is coming out. Now, the main differences that I see here is uh, the tub looks like it was just stretched out. Uh, so if you look at the tub, see this extra space here between the ESC and the receiver box? It looks like it was stretched out. Everything else in the tub looks about the same. Uh, it... Uh, it does appear to be wider. It's only eight millimeters. So I'm wondering if four millimeters, if that's just the offset in the wheels, um, because everything from the picture looks very similar. If you look at this here, this over here, that section there, this section here. One of the things that I'm excited though, is it does have this front diffuser and that's very important. I will talk about that slightly later. Uh, another major difference is the uh, tires. So the diameter, it does have a larger diameter, 73 millimeters versus 66. And later, once I'm doing the math portion, uh, this will be an important figure. Uh, but uh, th this is a Corvette. Uh, I wish, uh, I mean, the Corvette is a nice vehicle, but I wish the Ford GT was this size. Um, although 110 is great, but I like this stretched out uh, vehicle a little more, mainly because if you're going to be in the track, this is perfect. Uh, nice, short, uh, nimble. Uh, but if you're going to be just bashing or doing speed runs, the longer tub is great. And one of the things that I like is they added, if you look here, uh, 33 millimeters. And it appears again to be in the tub. So if, if you look at the battery tray here, uh, I mean, the 2.0, if you have one and you measure it, it's approximately 160 millimeters. So if you were to add that uh, 32 millimeters to it, you would have a tray that is uh, 192 millimeters, which is great. And the reason why is, notice this comes with the 12 turn Titan motor. But if you remember, Traxxas has the 540XL motor. That's the motor that's in some of their other vehicles, like their monster truck, right? The Max. Uh, Max has that 540XL motor, which would fit. You would just have to move the ESC, use double stick tape, place it over here, and the motor would now fit. So by having this longer tray, you could potentially run a 4S system, such as that 540XL system, and run two shorty packs. Uh, shorty packs can be anywhere from, say, approximately 90, 91, say 91 millimeters, that's how much mine measures, to 95 millimeters, that's one of my other packs. Uh, but if you have two packs that are the same, you could fit one pack here and another pack here and run them in series. Now, I will explain that uh, during the math portion, but that's why I think this is cool. The reason why is if you install the Valenian system in here, or uh, if you've seen uh, one of my other videos, I installed a Hobby Wing Easy Run system uh, in here, which is a short course system. Hey, you can install a short course system over here too. Uh, the car does hit 70 miles per hour. Now, I used a different body in stock form with a stock body, Mustang body, GT body, because you don't have a wing and the aerodynamics aren't that great. You are never going to hit 70 miles per hour under normal conditions because the car is just going to lift uh, and it's going to grow imaginary wings and try to fly like a chicken. Uh, and hens don't do a very good job of flying. Uh, so I had to use a different body. And then again, aerodynamics plays a key 
key factor here where there will not be enough downforce. So your tires are actually kind of spinning uh, and not getting enough traction at that speed. Uh, so with this one, hopefully with this front diffuser, that will help out a lot. And the body, it looks like it would be a great body. You may have to remove this rear end. Uh, for example, I've done 70 miles per hour with a Mustang body. I don't have a recording with it, but I had to remove this rear, uh, the rear clip off of the body and then install a wing. It was actually a wing off of a buggy with two spacers. Uh, I actually took the mounts from a slash, the front, uh, was it the front or the rear? I think it was the front body uh, post from a slash four wheel drive to put the wing high up and uh, that helped. That's the only way I was able to reach that speed without flying with the Mustang body. But the video that I've recorded, I use a completely different body. But anyway, uh, this looks great and it's uh, $350, I'm, I'm rounding, so it was a US dollars. It's supposed to be here in May and like I said, very similar to the Fortec 2.0 everything, which if the parts happen to be the same, except for the top, that is great because now you can have two cars and they're, they would be modular. You can swap everything out. Now, the reason why I believe uh, this car, the width is in the wheels is because of where these disc brakes sit. Based on these pictures, these disc brakes sit all the way to the inside of the wheel. Whereas on the actual Fortec, this little simulated caliper is very, very close to the outside of the wheel. So the calipers are actually further in. That is why I believe they got the extra four millimeter width on each side, just by using a different offset wheel. Uh, that is what uh, I'm thinking just based on how this looks, uh, but I could be wrong because keep in mind the rear, uh, it does look like it's further in. So it could be something else, but uh, I'm hoping um, I'm hoping they are the same. If the arms happen to be longer, I don't know. Uh, that would be interesting. I wonder how many people would mod their Fortex after that. But uh, this is the car and it's incredible detail. If you look at all the pictures, I mean, the detail is superb. And Traxxas does a very good job with uh, scaling real vehicles. If you've looked at their Ford Raptor, for example, Ford Mustang, Ford GT, Ford GT is a beautiful body. So it, this is probably going to be as well a beautiful, beautiful rendition. Uh, but you have here the dimensions and again, it does come with the XL5 and it does come with a Titan uh, 12 turn uh, 550 motor. But like I said, it's longer by 32 millimeters, which means you can probably fit those two shorty packs. So you would be able to get the 540 system. Now, uh, if you buy brand new, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, costly, but you're still under $600 if you do this. And then if you were a friend or a neighbor, I'd probably buy that uh, uh, Titan system because I like running that system. Uh, but so you're still under $600. Now let's just say you didn't want to go with this, but uh, you can usually get these, you know, take off. Uh, some people remove these and then get them for a pretty good price. Uh, so shop around, but something else, look, $230, 228. You can get a castle system. So if you're a castle fan, uh, this is 2400 kV, and I believe it's also a 70 millimeter can, which to be honest is a lot longer than you need uh, for this type of vehicle, uh, 69.5, almost 70. Uh, so the problem with the uh, VXL on the Fortec is it does get hot really fast. So the advantage of putting a longer can is uh, you could do a lot more speed runs and run cooler. Now an option, and this is probably what I would uh, go for because I do want that car, but I would go with this motor, especially since I have a 4S capable ESE just lying about. But uh, this one here is 2,700 KVs. Now you're looking at uh, 67 millimeters. So this would have plenty of torque, uh, plenty of power to propel that vehicle at X speed, and I'm going to talk about speed in the math section. 
Now I just want you to, uh, I want to compare that to this. So this is an Armin fraction. Armin fraction in fraction is about $650. This is why I'm super happy Traxxas is coming out with the 3.0. Uh, you're getting a car that's Traxxas part support big. It's a smaller, lighter vehicle. If you crash less damage, uh, not just to your car, but whatever you're hitting, uh, assuming it's another vehicle. I mean, you can dent vehicles with this. Uh, but now you can get something that's also cool. This is cool in a totally different way. Uh, but you can get something that's fast, that's smaller and lighter because these, to be honest, I think are way too big. They're super cool. If you have one, if you want to give me one, I'll take it. But it's just a comparison. And then here is the infamous X01. And this is, I mean, a beautiful, great car that Traxxas made incredibly fast. Uh, the adverts say 100 miles per hour plus, I believe. Uh, it could be. But uh, you're looking at 750. Now, uh, I will admit that I've looked at this many, many times and I've wanted it and then had to convince myself uh, to hold off um, because I need to focus on other vehicles uh, such as uh, my Nitro Revo. Uh, but this is also a great car if you want speed, but again, uh, $750. And one of the things that you need to consider too is the cost of batteries. Uh, here, you're going to be using two 3S batteries really if you want that top speed so that you can run 6S. Uh, that's something you can do and run them in series. With the other one, uh, the infraction, I believe that one is 80 miles per hour, could be 80 plus but also you're looking at two batteries. So if you want the top speed, it will be 3S batteries and 3S batteries, good ones, you know, for the similar quality, tend to be a little more expensive. You might be thinking not that much expensive. Maybe you only spent 20, maybe you only spent $40 more, perhaps $60 more. You may think that's not much, but it could be depending on your budget. Keep in mind that an important thing when buying RC cars is establishing a budget, which is why I think this may be the best choice for many people. $350 in my case, uh, then you can get you know a different system if you want. Uh, for example, this, and uh, it would definitely be more more affordable. Especially if you're the uh, if you're just bashing from occasion to occasion because if you're running other vehicles, say slashes, you can just turn into shorty packs and just run shorty packs in here too. Like I said, if you do go into a forest system and then you could always just take them out and then run it, run them in your slash, you know, just two S one shorty at a time. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing too is the batteries are here. They don't go in a compartment. So you can have uh, bullet connectors that go right on top without anything interfering. But other than that, I think it's really exciting. We have this uh, slightly larger uh, touring car now by Traxxas, which I can't wait for this to come out. Uh, I need to behave so that my wife lets me get it at least by the end of the year. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Well, uh, for now, uh, let's move on over and let's start our math time. When I talked about the extended tub, those uh, 32 millimeters, the reason why I think they're in the tub and the tray is if you look at the bumpers, disregard them because the body does hang beyond these. And if you look at the rear wheels, see how this is centered and see how the front, this wheel's right about the middle. And this wheel, if you take half of 66, that's 33, anyway, it looks to be about halfway. So that's why I think it's in the tub, but it's math time. So here we go. So let's just say we take the battery tray. So if the Fortec, like I said, is about uh, 160 millimeters. And then if you add the 32, you're at uh, 192 millimeters. 
Uh, shorty pack can range between these two lengths, uh, well, at least the ones I have. Uh, well, I only have these two sizes. So that means that two of them would easily fit into this battery tray, which means I can do the following. Now the Fortec 2.0 uh, can be equipped with a VXL system. It's 3500 KVs, 3S. Now here, uh, I'm just trying to find a ratio and I'm just multiplying 3500 with three. And over here for the motor, I'm going to, let's just say, everything else is the same, gear ratios, everything, uh, you know, the differentials. And I'm going to be using the 540XL motor from Traxxas. That's a 2400 kV motor capable of 4S. Now, the reason why I do not care about the actual voltage, 7.4, 7.4, is because it's the same voltage per cell. And we're working on a ratio, so 7.4 divided by 7.4 is 1. So I don't care. I'm actually trying to make my numbers smaller. Uh, so I multiply this times this, I get this. To be honest, just drop the zeros. So just 35 and 3, 24 and 4. And you should be able to just see that and drop them. But just in case you did not, I put those values here. Uh, 10,500. And you would multiply this by 74 if you really wanted to have a massive number. Uh, and then down here, 9,600. So if you look at this ratio, uh, one of the things that we see is that uh, the VXL on 3S will be spinning at higher RPMs than the 540 at 4S. But keep in mind that this is a 70 millimeter can versus I believe a 55. This is going to have more torque. Uh, the diameter is the same in the motors. This is just a longer motor longer magnet, more torque. Uh, so right now, do not focus too much on speed. It's this ratio that we want. Now that we have a ratio, we need to worry about something else. We need another ratio. And that ratio has to do with the tires. Now we have to remember that circumference is equal to two pi r. Now for pi, I'm just going to round it to 3.14. It's much easier. And we know uh, from Traxxas that the diameter is 66 millimeters for the 2.0 and 73 for the 3.0, which gives us a radius of 33 and 36.5 for the other one. Now, really quick, if you, because we're looking for a ratio, it's a ratio that we need to find. If you forget to divide both of these by two to get the radius, it's not a big deal. And the reason why is because two divided by two is one. Uh, so in this case, even though you make a mistake and use the diameter instead of the radius, because we're looking for a ratio, it will even out, it will compensate for it. Uh, but these are the two ratios that we want right now. Uh, so one of the things that you can see is Yes, uh, the 4S motor is slower than the 3S motor uh, when it comes to revolutions per minute, but uh, we have more circumference. Therefore, each revolution, the 3.0 will travel farther than the 2.0. So there we see that, you know, there's a give and a take between the two. And this is why ratios are important. Now, we're, we are going to take these two ratios now and put them together to find our overall ratio, which is what we want now to calculate our speed uh, or try to predict our speed. So this is what you need to do before you start spending money on random things to see if it's worth it, if you will achieve your speed goals, if they're even possible. Let's just say your speed goal was 80 miles per hour. Is that possible? What if it was... If your goal were 85 or 90 miles per hour, uh, let's just say kilometers, say your goal was 130 kilometers, 150 kilometers, is it possible? So we take the ratio from the motors, revolutions per minute, and then we take the ratios for the circumference of the tires and we combine them. The reason why I'm not taking ratios or accounting for the rest of the drivetrain, such as the ratios, pinion, spur, differentials, it's because I'm assuming they are the same. 
the assumption is that the gear differentials, uh, the ratios of the gear differentials on both cars are the same. I'm not expecting Traxxas to make a different drivetrain. Maybe they did, maybe not, but let's assume they are the same. The other assumption too is that we use the optional spur gear, uh, which is smaller. Uh, it's either 52 or 55, I believe it's a, uh, it's a smaller one. Uh, and we're using the same spur, we are using the same pinion. So all of the gears are the same. The only variables are the motor revolutions per minute and the circumference of the tires. Once we have these two ratios, we can take the uh, ratio for the tires and just place them here. Uh, so we will have 207 over 229, and we will multiply this times the motor ratio. So the difference in the motors, or the ratio of the motor RPM, which is 105 and 96. And right off the bat, you can see slower tires, faster motor faster tires, slower motor. And we get our ratio right over here. And just by looking at these numbers here, uh, 21,735 for the 2.0 and 21,984 for the 3.0. You can see that the 3.0 is going to be faster. How much faster? We need this ratio and we need to figure it out. So here's where our eighth grade algebra comes into play. And we are now going to look at uh, the 2.0 and the 3.0. But the speed, we want to calculate a theoretical speed, right? No other variables, we're gonna ignore air resistance because this can is so much longer and has so much more torque. Uh, it should be able to handle the additional weight, whatever weight this car should have. Now, here's a quick little thing. Uh, my Fortec 2.0 with a battery uh, weighs at about 1717, so 1717 grams approximately. So this one over here, I'm sure even if it were two kilos, uh, two kilos is about 4.4 pounds, uh, the 540XL motor should easily propel the car, no problem. Uh, if the VXL motor can do it with the 2.0, then the 540XL can do it with the 3.0. Now, one of the things that we have over here is X. We don't know the speed. This is a theoretical speed. This is what we're trying to find. So we take 70 miles per hour, which is approximately 112 kilometers per hour. Uh, and then uh, we take the overall ratio over here and just apply it here. Now, uh, we need to take the reciprocal because we're trying to find X. So we take the reciprocal here and we take the reciprocal over here. So just flip both sides and it's this equal to this. So X over 70 is equal to 21,984 over 21,735. Uh, now, if you wanted to do this calculation in kilometers per hour, then just use the kilometers instead of the miles. Uh, but now you can solve, and all you have to do if you look at this is just multiply both sides by 70. So these 70s will go away, and you will just have 70 times the numerator divided by the denominator, 70 times this ratio. And that is it. And what you will end up getting is approximately 70.8 miles per hour, which is approximately 114 kilometers per hour. So if your goal was to get the 3.0 to travel at least 70 miles per hour or say 110 kilometers per hour, you can certainly achieve that uh, using the 540XL system. Just keep in mind that you need to use, assuming all the gears are the same, you're gonna be using a 35 pinion and you will be using the smallest of the three spurs that are available for the Fortec 2.0, assuming it's the same for the 3.0. At this point, again, it's just speculation and it's fun math. And this is something that I actually do when I'm thinking of what modifications to uh, do on some of my cars. And this is why I thought of doing this here. 
Now, uh, so that sounds good, but uh, what if we want more speed? Well, here's an option. Now, uh, on the Fortec, I've actually gone through and measured, and if you get the HR Racing uh, motor mount, which is what I have in one of my Fortec 2.0s, that's the one that I ran in the video, uh, 70 mile per hour one. That one there, uh, you can actually fit a 38 tooth pinion. Now, 39, I did didn't buy a 39, I'm planning on buying a 39, but I think it will not mesh properly. It's based on my calculations, uh, you know, about a 38.5 would have been the size, so maybe a 39 would fit. Uh, keep in mind that my calculations are only as good as my measurements, which are only as good as my uh, ruler. So that's something to keep in mind. Maybe I can fit a 39 pinion, but you know, 38 fits uh, with that motor mount. So, that being said, we set up another ratio. So the theoretical speed over the actual speed, well, I guess this one's theoretical as well, you know, right? But uh, let's, so, so it's the theoretical speed with the 38 pinion gear versus the theoretical speed that we calculated over a 35. So again, this is just a ratio of pinion gears. It's just 38 over 35 and it should hold for the ratio of the speeds. So 78.8 is to 35 as X is to 38. Think about it that way. So it's just ratios. It's, it's quite simple. Again, eighth grade math. Some of you are probably thinking, wait, uh, I did this in seventh grade. And chances are, if I had been your teacher, you probably even saw it in sixth, even fifth. But eighth grade, you should have seen this. Uh, but let's continue on. So now again, multiply both sides by 70.8. And when you multiply both sides by 70.8, uh, this one goes away and we will have 70.8 times 38 divided by 35, 76.9, which is 123.7 kilometers per hour. So in theory, we could reach at least 75 miles per hour with the 540XL system and a 38 pinion. And we could reach over 120 kilometers per hour. The other beautiful thing is, I know you're thinking, well, you know, the X01 does 100. Yes, but this one's smaller and smaller RC cars look faster even though they're going the same speed. So if you take two RC cars, say you take a 116 scale that can do 25 miles per hour, and you take a 1 8th scale at 20 miles per hour, and you're not running them together, the smaller vehicle is going to make it seem as if it were traveling at a faster speed, even though they're traveling at precisely the same speed. So that's something to consider, just the cool factor. If you're bashing, the cool factor is very important. So let's continue on. Well, what if I decided to go with the Tekken T8i motor? Well, set up another ratio. You already know what the theoretical speeds are. Just set up a ratio for the KVs. Uh, the Tekken T8i motor is a 2700 kV motor. The 540XL is a 2400 kV. Uh, now again, this one will have plenty of power to propel that car. So the ratio, if I just drop the zeros, will be a 27 over 24. Look, same equation, right? That speed is to 24 as X is to 27. Uh, sorry, multiply both sides by 76.87, that will go away, and you'll have 76.87 times 27 divided by 24, and we just exceeded 80 miles per hour. So in theory, we could go over 85 miles per hour, and we could go over 135 kilometers per hour. And this is the way you would do it. 
Now really quick, wiring a series is very, very simple. Uh, all you have to do in order to wire in series is the following. Uh, you take your two batteries and you take the positive from one battery connect it to the positive of the ESC. So the ESC is gonna to go to the positive of that battery. Then you take the negative of that same battery, connect it to the positive of battery two, and then you take the negative lead of battery two, connect it to the negative of the ESC. And that's how you wire in series. And long story short, this is why I'm so excited about this Fortec uh, 3.0, because it's a longer platform which I believe will be more stable at higher speeds, that I will be able to modify to hit these speeds uh, safer than a 2.0, because a 2.0, once it gets over 60 miles per hour, it starts wanting to lift and fly, probably earlier than that, but I have gotten mine to 70, and uh, it's not the easiest thing to control. You have to be careful, and you need a lot of space, a lot of just room on both sides of the car. Uh, this one here with the longer chassis uh, and that front diffuser should uh, should be a much better car. And again, $350 plus the system. Uh, let's just say another, let's just say it was another 250. You're looking at $600. You're below the other two options. And look, you just beat the infraction. If the infraction is rated at 80 miles per hour, you just beat the infraction. Uh, so other than that, keep that in mind if you were planning on buying a Fortec or one of the other vehicles. Uh, you may want to hold off until the 3.0 comes out and maybe consider one of these. That's what I'm doing, but just because I'm doing it doesn't mean you have to. But uh, please pause this, go back on the video, and then review these calculations so that in the future other RCs you can run them and then start planning uh, your goals. Thank you so much for watching.